gaps which we face in our own lives, um, those times which we find difficult, and as we prepare to worship, we bring them to Almighty God in prayer and in faith, knowing that he can calm the storms of life. Do take a look at our weekly news sheet for um, news of things which are happening this week. Um, a particular, and a couple of notes from me in particular. Um, next Sunday and the following Sunday, we're going to be singing two hymns which you won't have sung or you may not have sung before. One is called Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness. The other is You Have Called Us by Our Name. They're by a Catholic, modern Catholic hymn writer called Bernadette Farrell. She's really good. Um, and in Mia's email that she sent out, there's a link to a couple of YouTube videos which has got those, have got those hymns on them. They're great hymns, but do prepare yourselves for worship over the next couple of weeks by um, having a listen to those hymns if you have a computer. If you don't, you'll pick them up. They're pretty straightforward. Um, but do have a listen before that. Um, the box for collecting um, uh, foreign currency is still at the font, so please do rummage through that drawer in which you keep your old Deutschmarks and things like that. And, uh, and bring them along. Um, we'll be collecting for a little while for Headway Surrey. Our dear friend John Pullen, who died recently, his funeral is this coming Friday in the Church of St Thomas of Canterbury, East Clandon. I know there'll be lots of people from West Clandon who will want to go um, to that funeral, and you are all very welcome to pay your respects to John and to support Carol, who uh, um, is a West Clandoner, I'm sure you all know well. Um, please do be there's going to be quite a few people going to the funeral, so I just pay attention, if you will, to the notice about parking. Um, it can be, get a bit fraught, particularly when we've got to deal with hearses and all sorts of things outside the church, and the people in St Thomas's Drive can get, a bit, um, can get a bit understandably upset when the drive is completely packed full of cars. There are plenty of parking spaces on the old Epsom Road, which is not very far away from the church, so please do find somewhere to park where you're not sort of blocking the way um, if you're coming to that funeral. I say that just because we don't want a kerfuffle at the funeral with people from St. St. Thomas's Drive. We're not, we are recording, aren't we, rats? I'll edit that bit out. I'm sure they won't be watching. Uh, anyway, in a, Sebastian's going to play for a moment longer, and then in a moment we're going to stand to sing our first... Oh, there will be coffee, by the way, after the service. Stay behind after the service for coffee. Thank you, Mia, for preparing coffee today. Um, in a moment, we're going to sing our first hymn, The Church is One Foundation, which can be found on page two of your weekly news sheet. Hello. There's a slight... So this was going to be a morning worship, so you're down to read doing, the gospel. That's me. Yeah. yeah. That's the gospel is read by the priest. Yeah. Would you be able to read the psalm instead? Yeah. It's really straightforward. Yeah. Thank you, Julian. Come, Come up and do it. Yeah, I'll give you a shout when, when it's time. I know, I know. It's a slight change about. I'll tell you about it later. One holy name she blesses 
partakes one holy food. <clears throat> With every grace and In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship Almighty God, we remember that we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden. And so we confess our sins in penitence and faith. We sit or kneel to pray. Almighty God, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We stand for the Gloria. and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ. Only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your creation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen we sit for our first scripture reading. living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honour and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We remain seated for the psalm. The response to the psalm, O Lord, you are the hope of the ends of the earth. O Lord, you are the hope of the ends of the earth. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. O, o Lord, Lord, you are the hope of the ends of the earth. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. O oh Lord, you, you are, are the hope of the ends of the earth. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you established the mountains. O, o Lord, Lord, you are the hope of the ends of the earth. You silence the roaring of the seas. 
the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at Earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. O Lord, Lord, you are the hope of the ends of the earth. We stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boats were filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed, and said to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. (coughs) I don't know how your gardens fared. on Friday with Storm Eunice at the rectory as we um, clear up the branches and as people around us repair bits of broken fence in Eunice's wake, it feels an entirely appropriate day for us to spend some time reflecting on this reading from St Luke's Gospel in which we see our Lord's power over the tempest, over the raging storm. The disciples were seasoned mariners, as we know, or at least many of them were. They were fishermen. They were used to dealing with storms on the Sea of Galilee. They knew what signs to expect when the weather was about to turn. They knew how to get themselves out of trouble. It would have, I guess, been quite some storm to frighten these hardy seafarers. Perhaps they'd been struggling against the storm for some time, bailing out the water which had been swamping their boat, trying desperately to steer the boat so that the wind didn't capsize them, so that the waves didn't crash into the side. They would have been frightened, working incredibly hard, and at this point, completely desperate. Just on a natural level, there was plenty to be frightened about on the Sea of Galilee on that day. But to the ancient Jewish people, the sea wasn't just a physically perilous place. It was spiritually dangerous too. The ancient Hebrews believed that the tumult of the waves was caused by demonic forces of chaos which lived in the deep. And that sense of the deep being a place associated with evil um, had persisted to Jesus' day. In a few verses' time in Luke's Gospel, we read the story of Jesus casting out demons from a man who had many, many demons 
called Legion. You might remember the story. He casts out, he's about to cast the demons out, and the demons say, cast us out into that herd of swine over there. And so he casts them out into the herd of swine. And what do the pigs immediately do? They run headlong into the lake of, into the Sea of Galilee. They run back, as it were, to their native territory, to the water. The ancient Hebrew people believed that the tumult of the waves was caused by demonic forces of chaos. It was the abode of terrible sea monsters, the ancient sea dragon, Leviathan and Rahab. You read about them in the Old Testament. It's little wonder that the Jewish people never really became a great maritime nation. They were terrified of the sea. In the book of Revelation, there's a verse where St. John sees the new heaven and the new earth, and he says, and behold, there was no more sea. There was no more chaos. There was no more evil. There was no more um, uh, chaos in the world. All was brought under God's rule. There was no longer any sea. That's surely what that means. The sea was a place then of terror. God was the only one with the power to still, to still the raging of the waves. We read it in our psalm, Psalm 65, a moment ago in our service. There are plenty of other psalms. Psalm 89, for example, we read, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its ra waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. <clears throat> While the disciples were struggling to keep the boat from sinking, our Lord slept peacefully, unperturbed by the storm that was raging around him. The Lord of heaven and earth slept peacefully. When the disciples woke him, Jesus spoke to the storm and it was stilled. In fact, he didn't just speak, he rebuked the storm. That's the word which was used. He gave it a telling off, you know, good old ticking off, um, the naughty storm. Um, there we go. He rebuked the storm. I think it was stronger than a, a fatherly ticking off, I'm sure. He rebuked the storm. He spoke as though it were a personal force. St. Luke, interestingly, uses the same word, rebuke, for Jesus casting out demons. When he casts a demon out of somebody, he rebukes it. Again, something which reminds us that this miracle is as much about Jesus' power over the spiritual realm as it is about his power over the physical. Where is your faith? The Lord says to his disciples. Now that might seem a little harsh, a little unfair, given the severity of the storm, given that these were people who knew what a bad storm looked like. Surely this was one in which anyone would be entitled to be a bit frightened. It might seem a little bit unfair, but we need to remember that these are the people to whom the Lord Jesus had just said, to you, my disciples, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. These were people who knew. They knew, or at least their knowledge of Jesus and who he was, was growing. They had seen him cure the sick they had seen him bring a miraculous catch of fish out of the sea. They had even seen him raise somebody from the dead. The disciples had come to know that Jesus was not a mere man and they had, become to, they had come to place their faith in him. It wasn't then that these disciples didn't have faith. They had, though, perhaps begun to forget their faith in the Lord. And there's something, I think, quite comforting in this for people like me, people like us. If the focus of the disciples could be obscured by the squall, if they could forget their faith, it is little wonder that I am forgetful of my faith in the Lord when the tempests of life rage. Think for a moment. Think for those moments when the tiny vessel of your life seems to be buffeted 
to and fro by the storms of life. Think of the storms you have to endure. We know, each and every one of us knows, that it's not simply a case of saying, have enough faith and everything is going to get better. Sometimes we know that all the faith in the world will not change what's actually happening. We know that sometimes things don't get better. Things don't go how we planned or how we'd like them to go. Is this because we don't have sufficient faith? Not at all. God doesn't ask for perfect faith. He asks for the thinnest glimmer of faith, the tiniest bit of faith. It's not then a mark of faithlessness that our faith is often weak, particularly when the storms of life rage. It's not a mark of faithfulness. It's a mark of humanity. As it was for the disciples, so it is for us. It is a mark of humanity when our faith is weak, when we are forgetful of our Lord. God doesn't ask for perfect faith in the midst of the storm. He asks for real faith, with all of the fear and the uncertainty that goes along with real human faith. Ultimately, the disciples do have this faith, this tiny glimmer which shines even in the darkness of that day on the Lake of Galilee, on the sea, in the Sea of Galilee. They stopped looking at the storm. They stopped trying to make sure that the boat was kept upright by their own power. They stopped trying to do things themselves. They stopped looking at what was going on around them and instead they looked to the Lord Jesus. They woke him. They looked to him in their time of need and looking they were overcome with awe and wonder. Their faith was strengthened they, they didn't say, what manner of wind and waves are these, that suddenly they've stopped. They looked at the Lord Jesus and they said, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They looked to Christ. That's, I think, the question that St. Luke wants us to ask ourselves what manner of man is this? Who is this man who brings peace to the tempest, who has power to silence the forces of darkness and chaos? Those who knew the book of Psalms, who prayed them regularly, who read the Old Testament, they knew the answer that would be implicit within that question. Who is this man? The only answer is this man wields the power of God himself. He is none other than the Lord God the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who holds everything, heaven, earth, land, sea, creatures, who holds absolutely everything in being at every moment by his love and his power. He is the Lord God walking among us, showing us that the heart of God is a heart of compassion and love and care. The same Lord of power and love is present with us, even during the storms of our lives, the tempests which surround us. The storm may howl, and the ship and the crew may seem wholly inadequate, but he is present with us. May we lift our eyes from the storm and look to him in our time of need and know his peace, which passes understanding. Amen. We stand to declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to hear our prayers this wintry morning as we pray for all humankind, for others and for ourselves. We pray that every living person of any faith or no faith at all may see and experience you in the people around them, in their environment, and in themselves and in their daily lives. Help us all to seek out, recognize, acknowledge, and follow your greater light. Bless and guide all those who lead us in our search. Bless our bishops, senior clergy, and of course our rector Barnaby, Douglas, Helen, and Sue, and the team here in the Clandons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, we pray for all who have suffered from Storm Eunice and the day of destruction which followed in its path. We ask your blessing on all who've worked over the last couple of days and continue to work to rescue people animals and property, to restore vital services to homes, and to repair the damage caused by the extreme weather. We pray for all who do not have the protection of a solid and safe home, for those estranged from their families, for families living in dirty or dangerous accommodation, for anyone lonely fearful or homeless, for refugees and asylum seekers who have left a fragile or dangerous home to seek safety. We live in a very unequal society, Lord. Help us to extend our compassion, generosity, and efforts to help those so much less fortunate than ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. our prayer. God of peace, we pray for all Ukrainians as we watch with anxiety the build-up of Russian forces near the Ukrainian borders. We ask you to guide world leaders and all those taking key decisions to act with wisdom and to use their power and authority 
to come to a peaceful solution. The actions and words of so many journalists, those active in the media, the military, and many others can also affect outcomes. We ask you to guide everyone involved to think, act, speak, and write with care, and to focus on a de-escalation of this threat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for ourselves and our friends and families. Be with us in our daily lives and in all our village events and activities. We pray for the healing of Hilary McKinnon, Delia and Richard Baker, Jean Forley, Robert Cools, Pamela Backhouse, Richard Perkins, Kathy McMullen, Moira Maidment, George Piers, and Alexandra Cresswell. We pray for the repose of the souls of John Pullen, Peter Annals, and Shelley Moss, who all died recently. We ask you to bless all who are mourning, all who are anxious or unwell, those recovering from illness or injury, and for those we have loved and who are no longer with us here on earth, but whose spirits are with us as fragments of an eternity interpreted by your love. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another still a socially distant sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We stand and sing our offertory hymn as the altar is prepared, which can be found on page six of your weekly news sheet. When all thy mercies, O my God, my rising soul surveys, transported with the view I'm lost in wonder, love and praise. Transported with
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine which we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, as we make this offering, may our worship in spirit and truth bring us salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 